Hey, Seattle Andrew here, and I'm here with my Xperia Play to give you some tips, tricks, and some of the frequently asked questions I've gotten from some of my videos. So first off, let's talk about file managers. So when you download things to your phone via USB or any other means, uh, say like through the web browser, you're going to download it onto the phone itself, either on the SD card or whatever internal storage. Uh, since the Xperia Play doesn't have internal storage, you're just going to be doing onto the SD card. So when you download it here, uh, where is it? Well, let me show you. So there's lots of File Explorer apps uh, in the Android market but there isn't actually one default on the phone so you will want to go download one from the Android market I personally like Root Explorer uh, this is one of my favorite ones um, and it's a lot like what you're kinda used to from like Windows or Mac it's just a whole bunch of folders and files Ooh. so if you've ever browsed for a file on the computer you should be right at home with what this is so it's a whole bunch of directories just pointing you to where all your files are. So when you download something, where do you think it's gonna go? Oh, look at that, the download folder. This is automatically generated whenever you download anything to your phone. So this is a folder that's by default gonna be on your system. So if you download, say, like Young's emulators from the SlideMe market, well, they're gonna be right in here. And this is where you can install them from. Um, and you can also, with File Explorers, manage things like copy, paste. It's essentially, you know, what you're used to. Now, I had mentioned something. When you download, like, Yonks's emulators, like this Snesoid emulator right here, well, I've downloaded it. What if I want to install it? Well, I would just go click on it and install. But there's a big issue here. What about installations from unknown locations? So let me explain that really quickly. An unknown location is any place that is not the Android market. So that's the Amazon App Store, that's the internet, that's even bringing a file over from like your computer and then you know moving it over to the SD card and trying to install from there, doesn't matter. As long as it's not being installed through the Android market, it's considered an unknown location. It doesn't mean that you can't install it, it just means that you need to enable a certain setting. So let me show you where that is. You hit menu from the home, you'll have settings. So just go over to your normal Android settings. You'll go over to applications. And right here at the top, unknown sources. Make sure that's checked. Basically, it allows you to install those applications from anywhere you want. Uh, and that's required if you're going to be installing uh, Snesoid. So if we wanted to go back to our root explorer, Oh look, I have uh, Nova 2. So if I click on that, it will say this is a package. An APK is an Android package file. So you're like, oh yeah, I want to install it. And it will bring up this. Do you want to install it? Here's the permissions it's using. And then you can hit install and then it will work on installing it. Um, so file managers are your best friend. Make sure that installations from uh, unknown locations is checked so that's good and that's for that now in terms of actual performance let's talk about Snesoid since that's a really popular one um, in Snesoid whoops there's something called the C core so let me show you what happens when you don't have the C core and you try playing Super Mario RPG Let's move this. Notice you can hear it, but nothing's actually happening. I'm pressing buttons, nothing's happening. What the heck? Why is it doing this? Well, a very simple answer. You need to go over to your settings in Snesoid, and you need to go to other settings. Now, why is this? Well, the Super Nintendo had a special type of processor that can't always be emulated. Uh, there's something called the C core, which games like Super Mario RPG actually utilized. Uh, 3D rendered games and things that uh, aren't normal run of the mill. So think F Zero, Star Fox, Star, uh, and then Super Mario RPG. Games like that um, will probably need the C core. 
Uh, most games will run just a little bit slower, but if we go back here, close it, so we've killed that, and we go back and open up Super Mario RPG again. Now that the C core is running, oh look at this, button presses and everything. So it plays a lot better now. Um, so make sure that when you're using SNESoid and if you want to play Super Mario RPG, make sure that C core is checked. Okay, for the next thing, WTF is a BIOS. So I've talked about another emulator, Game Boy, or some people use PSX4 Droid or FPSE. PlayStation emulators and GB emulators require a BIOS file. A uh, BIOS file uh, for the GBA is called the GBA BIOS bin. Um, if we go to settings. What this is, is it's a simple system file that's required for the emulator. The emulator can certainly uh, do uh, the processing. It, it can emulate the games that you're playing, but it can't emulate everything like the processor or the system files and stuff. And so these emulators require a BIOS file. You can look on the internet, seriously, just a simple Google search and you can find this stuff. So for GBA, it's GBA BIOS bin. Uh, and then when you open up GBA, uh, Game Boy, I'm sorry. You know, when you open up Game Boy, you, it'll ask you, what's the BIOS file? And you point to it, like using a file manager, you'll just point to that BIOS file that you've downloaded. Uh, uh, and then you can enter it that way. For um, PSX, 4Droid, or FPSE, uh, basically PlayStation emulators, uh, the BIOS file I think is called SCPH1001. I'll include an updated name, you know, probably in a box right around here, uh, so you can take a look at that box and, I don't know, do a Google search for that. Um, now, what to do when uh, you're stuck, something's not working, how do you troubleshoot this? So if you've downloaded a game and it comes out black and you have no idea what's going on, like I download Super Metroid and I try opening it up but it's just a black screen. So there's a couple of things that you can do. It's I can't offer a ton of help, uh, but the biggest thing is try downloading um, another version of it. So if Super Metroid wasn't working, download another version of Super Metroid from somewhere else. So go some other emulator site, go to some other ROM site, try downloading that and trying that. If that doesn't work, try other games. Try something else that you haven't played yet or just something to test to make sure that your app is working fine. If it isn't, then you should probably uninstall the emulator and then reinstall it. Um, for Game Boy and for uh, PlayStation emulators, try a different BIOS file. Um, essentially, you're going to be swapping out stuff, trying to eliminate variables that could cause issues. Just the scientific method, alright? So when you want to troubleshoot, just try a different ROM, try a different game, uh, and then try uninstalling and reinstalling the actual emulator. Try those things. Now, I get a lot of the questions about what theme am I using? Ooh, this is cool. I'm just using ADW Launcher X, uh, and this theme is specifically called the Nexus S Gingerbread theme. Uh, I like it. Uh, just because it's green and green is my favorite color. So it's nothing special. Uh, if you're not very familiar with Android, you can change your launcher, which is basically your home screen, um, and you can change it to whatever sorts of things you want. So that's all. Whew. Okay, hopefully I helped you guys. Uh, if you still have issues, I read all the comments. Um, you guys are what you know keeps me going and I make videos for you guys so leave your comments give me some thumbs up if you like this video and if you like the previous uh, Android tutorial uh, like subscribe alright I'm Seattle Andrew and I hope you have better luck now